Welcome back to the Touchline here. I'm Robert Osoro here on Y254. It is the Touchline. If you're just joining us, you can also join us on social media at Y254 at Mirumbi Osoro is where you can find us here for the Touchline. A very beautiful Saturday afternoon that will be giving all the juicy stories that are coming out of the Tokyo 20, 20, 2020 Olympics. Rather, that name stayed like that because the competition was slated to be staged on 2020, but because of the COVID-19, it had to be brought to 2021, but we still call it Tokyo Olympics 2020. It was going to be a very good year for Kenya, considering the first ever Olympic title that came to Kenya was won back in 1964 in the 800 meter 1000 meter yard and it was won by wilson kiprogut he was supposed to be flying the kenyan flag but because there are no spectators allowed onto the stadium he could not get a chance to get on to kenya but so far the medals have started streaming in china already has got two medals three medals so so far with the two gold medals and one bronze japan comes second with the two medals so far one gold and one silver ecuador has one gold so far iran also one gold but kenya we still haven't started our game we'll be back and that medal table will be changing anytime soon but for now we are going to talk about everything that has been happening in the NBA Finals where the Milwaukee Bucks won against the Phoenix Suns to lift the title for the first time in 50 years. But also the Kenya Lioness, the ladies basketball team also coming back to qualifying for, coming back actually and qualified for the Afro Basketball Finals that will be staged in Kigali, Rwanda. Joining me to discuss more about this season of basketball, we're still having here Tyrus Wayaki, and I'm still chilling with him. And also joining us is the one and only Sami Gitai. Sami, how are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Uh, it has been a wonderful week of basketball, definitely. <laughs> yes. Started off with the Kenya Lionesses on Sunday evening. Yes. And then we had games five and six of the NBA finals. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm a happy man. Finally, I can get some sleep. You can get some <laughs> because the, the games are happening way on to the night. Yeah. D did you enjoy the Afro, the Kenyan ladies, how they were playing their basketball? Yeah, I did catch a few games in there. Yes. And especially the final, mm -hmm. them playing against Egypt. Yeah. We all know the story about 2019, what happened in there. And mm -hmm. so it was a sweet revenge for the girls. Yeah. And uh, it was good to see them actually keep the lead because mm -hmm. their last time they played in the group stages, yes. they lost after having a 25 point lead at halftime. Mm -hmm. And then the lead dwindled and they lost by a point. So it was good to see them get through from how they started the tournament. They started on a bad note, mm -hmm. losing to Rwanda, winning against South Sudan, and then losing again to Egypt. It was good to see them now get the revenge again, win against Rwanda and win against Egypt. Some of the players in there that probably caught my eye. We yes. talk about a, a, a girl like Victoria Reynolds, who plays in the United States. She was absolutely incredible and was awarded the MVP. Yes. Same case to Felma Skoranga mm -hmm. and Masi Wanyama too. Those players were really integral for the Lionesses, and I'm really happy to see them actually now qualify to the mm -hmm. Afro Basket Tournament together with the Morans. You, you gotta give a chance to the US based. Uh, 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 what was her name? Filmas Koranga and yeah. Victor Reynolds coming on for the Kenya Lioness. They really brought a certain impact and added to the flair of our local game in this uh, championship. Well, they definitely did. And mm -hmm. as I said earlier, these are the things that make us proud to be Kenyan. It's yes. not much that does you proud. Mm -hmm. uh, to see them do so and in such remarkable fashion turn the tables mm -hmm. against recent history yes that's a sure delight mm -hmm. and let me point out that um having been born a, a bit earlier than yes. uh, most youth of today and then grown up in the 80s this is quite a new phenomenon it used to be men dominating sports yes. but over the years we have now seen our sisters uh, stake their claim at very high levels yeah. and really emerge as people who are taking Kenya to the next level. Yes. And I told you earlier, over the last three Olympics, we've won 42 medals. More than half of those mm -hmm. have been won by our sisters. Mm -hmm. So this, this is stuff to be proud of. I remember when I was in third form, 1996, yes. 
when Pauline Conga won Kenya's first ever Olympic medal. That was big news and it was a bit of a culture shock. I know that may not sound politically correct now, but back then, believe you me, it was yeah. unheard of. Yes. So to see this progress and to see it across the sports, not just in basketball, we have a Kenya Sevens team of men at, at the Tokyo Olympics. We also have one of yes. the ladies. We have uh, a, a, the Kenyan heat squad, as it used to be known, our boxers, a contingent there in Tokyo of men. And we also have one of ladies. And Christine Ongare is one of our sure prospects yes. for any medal, if, if at all our yeah. ladies will get to win anything in boxing. So I'm very proud to see and this. In, in those uh, games that uh, the Kenya basketball team was in, you've got to give a chance to the Koranga, Reynolds, and also Masi Wanyama, who also came in. She was also another integral part of the team. Yeah, and that was the difference. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the team was consisted of many local players. When you yes. look at even the captain playing for KPA, mm -hmm. she used Akini. to talk. Yeah, and yes. she was talking about how they need to get a few players from abroad who can come with a little bit of experience. Yes, and that's what we found with Victoria Reynolds, especially because mm -hmm. she's been a champion in college. Yes. and again, talking about even the family thing, mm -hmm. she, her father is actually Mike Wanjara who was in the 93 squad that played in the Afro Basket tournament for Kenya. And yes. I think they finished fourth place in there. So mm -hmm. it's been 28 years and she was happy. It was a debut, mm -hmm. came in, scored around 25 points in the final and won MVP. Yes. Same case to Felma Skoranga. She was the top scorer for our Kenyan team, scoring over 89 points in the whole tournament. Yes. And it was lovely to see them actually come together. And also when you talk about some of the things falling in place and falling in order, you're talking about even the technical benches being combined when you talk about the Kenya Morans and the Kenya Leonesses, all the coaches came together, a yes. brilliant combination of great minds in basketball, mm -hmm. and they were able to come off from their slump that they had in the first two games. Yeah. And then even the logistics, no one has complained about maybe they didn't have the right material, they didn't get into the bubble quite earlier. So it was lovely to see everything go on smoothly. Mm -hmm. and. I hope they can do much better in the Afro Basket Championship. Just a quick update on what is happening at the Tokyo Olympic Games so far. Our Kenyan captain, Commander Nick Okoth, has actually lost 2-3 to Mongolian Edinburgh Zendbata in their men's featherweight round of 32 preliminaries contest. So Nick Okoth has lost that one there. But it is not all worse than done. We are just the start and we're hoping for Team Kenya to go ahead and do something wonderful for this one. What, what can you tell Nico Kot and the other guys who are waiting for this performance to kick off? Qualifying for the Olympics, any yeah. level, yes. is a huge achievement. Yeah. And he's done his best. He hasn't lost by a huge margin. Yes. It's just uh, small errors and, mm -hmm. and small margins, but obviously, we are reviving what I've just referred to as our hit squad. We used yes. to do very well in boxing mm -hmm. and we went on a slump. And now we're trying to get our stride back. It's mm -hmm. going to take time. There's going to be a few hits. There's mm -hmm. going to be a few misses. There's going to be a few wins and there's going to be a few losses along yeah. the way. But all is not lost. Well, Nico Kotz, they are losing in the first round of the round 32 of the featherweight boxing championship in the Tokyo Olympics there but let's come back to team kenya we were talking about the ladies who have actually managed to qualify for the afro basketball it is their sixth appearance this time around considering that they were there in 2019 mm -hmm. 2013 2007 1997 and way back in 1986 but it seems that there is a bit of a change in the basketball fraternity looking at how the morans also came out and actually went on to play in the Afro basketball mm -hmm. finals after a very long time. I think it was a 20-year drought yeah, that we years. had not made it to the Afro basketball finals. Mm -hmm. And now the ladies are also not being left behind. Yeah, it's everything that I said actually mm -hmm. about even the technical benches being together, mm -hmm. that they yes. were actually combined with the Morans team. And they have been there for a long time. I was actually listening to the now team manager, she's been there since 2013. Yes. She was an assistant manager then, mm -hmm. and she has been working with the ladies quite well in there. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the local competition, mm -hmm. the one that I was alluding to from KPA, yes. she was talking about how improved the facilities are right now and how incredible the competition is that mm -hmm. 
you need to be at your best level yes. to be in the national team. And that is what actually makes the difference with these ladies coming on and proving that they can do it. And at the same time, I mean, you talk about going into the bubble. If there is something that they've mentioned quite a while after they came back into the country was getting into the bubble quite earlier. Yes. And that is September, they'll be having the, new, the competition. Mm -hmm. So they want to be in the bubble for around maybe a month mm -hmm. so that they can actually get through the details. And again, another thing that I've had a lot, even with Victoria Reynolds when you were talking about winning the MVP was how they went through the films. Yes. That would mean uh -huh. there's a lot of technology going through there yes. that they can be able to stream matches and watch how the competitors are playing, mm -hmm. watch how they are playing their games and make adjustments. Yeah. And that is top quality kind of technology that we need. Preparation yep. is key. There's Sami Gitai here talking about everything that happened in the Afro basketball uh, qualifiers and Kenya will be playing there for the first time since 2019. We wish them good luck. Actually, we want to catch on what they'll be talking about. They'll be live on KBC Channel 1 from 2 p.m. So you can also go there and enjoy some of their conversations. But for us here, we've got to go back and talk about what happened on Wednesday as the Milwaukee Bucks also managed to come from a 50-year drought from a 2 nil lead in game one and two against the Phoenix Suns and then coming back to win 4-2 in the game six in the final game of the NBA finals. Did you enjoy the final? Yes, I did. And the <laughs> African input. Yes. Uh, I'm yeah. sure Getai would be able to pronounce uh, that, that chap's <laughs> name, <laughs> his name better. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. uh, uh, it's Yanis Atentokumbo. Atentokumbo. Yeah. yeah. Yes, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, he was born in Greece. Yeah. He's of Nigerian heritage. Mm -hmm. And just to see him go out there and with a final tally of a final points tally yes. that can only be matched in history by mm -hmm. the great Michael Jordan and another guy with probably Nigerian roots, Hakim the Dream Olajuwon. Mm -hmm. Those are great names. When we were growing up, those were the legends. Mm -hmm. And for him, to surpass Kobe Bryant at that level and all those other big names and to match them historically. Yeah. I think that really says a lot about our continents, yeah. a vast continent of talents. Mm -hmm. Going to America and achieving that yes. as a black man, mm -hmm. that's no mean repute. Yeah. That is something you take note of and that is something you celebrate. Before we go into the details of the match and everything, did you enjoy the final? Yeah, I mean, over the years we've been used to predicting who is going to be in the finals at yes. the beginning of the season. Yeah, You either talk about Lakers, you talk about the Golden State Warriors, mm -hmm. the Cavaliers or the Raptors, whoever mm -hmm. you're going to mention based on the talent they have in the team. And I guess this was a different season altogether. We had 72 games in the season from maybe the 82 that you usually have. And then if there was a factor that was in this season that probably differentiated teams was health because there was a lot of COVID-19 positives. Yes. Players used to go to health protocol. At the same time, we had lots of injuries because they just came in from the bubble, finished the championship, and within two months, they already started the new season. So this time around, to have two different teams that no one expected them to be in the finals, the Milwaukee Bucks probably would have expected them to get beat by the Brooklyn Nets because they were, that was a super team with KD, Kerry Irving and James Harden. Yes. And on the other side, you have Phoenix Suns. They mm -hmm. finished dead last, last season mm -hmm. and they only came into the bubble, won eight consecutive games. Yes. You look at that kind of a young team that has Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Michael Bridges, Cameron Payne. You don't think that these are the names that are going to make it to the finals. And then Chris Paul, yes. Jake Crowder gets into the team and they make it to the finals. So the level of unpredictability in the playoffs and the postseason was something to enjoy. And it was actually a record even in game four. Around 12 million viewers watched that game. So it, will, it sums up the level of excitement that was there in the NBA Finals this season. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the things that now started out was, I, I think, uh, the, the championship of the Cleveland Cavaliers mm -hmm. winning that one. They were also beaten the first game one and game two. Mm -hmm. And then now Milwaukee Bucks, mm -hmm. they have come in, lost game one, lost game two. How do you recover from that? Go ahead and win four now consecutive games for you to be declared the champion more than anything it's the psychological aspect yeah. that you have to conquer mm -hmm. because basketball you could be good you could be spot on yes 
there's things obviously you can polish up on. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you're now losing by two games to nothing, yeah. that calls for the psychological strength on your side yes. to overcome anything else, to surmount the challenge of the two game deficit. Yes. And you really must come together and believe that you're going to conquer yes. your opponent mm -hmm. in every single department, you're going to match them. Yeah. Everything counts at that level. Mm -hmm. Every pass, every block, every steal, every attempt at a three-pointer, every attempt at a two-pointer, every attempt at going for it and hoping to win yourself a foul mm -hmm. in the process and net it while looking for the foul as well. Yes. Everything has to be top-notch. And for that to be achieved psychologically, you must be at a nice place. Where do you think it changed for Milwaukee Bucks? And where, where, where did it go wrong for the Phoenix Suns? Well, first you go back to when Milwaukee started becoming a, a team that could win the championship. Yes. I think it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And they made it up to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. And the game changer there was Kawhi Leonard when he was a part of the Toronto Raptors. Yes. He defended Yanni Satendokum for, for life. He was there with him every second. Yeah. And it was a devastating loss for the Milwaukee Bucks at that time. Yeah. And then come in the bubble, they played against the Miami Heat and lost. Yes. Going back to those two seasons, there are those seasons where Milwaukee Bucks would absolutely tee up the league, mm -hmm. win the Eastern Conference place, be the best in the league. Yeah. But then when it comes to the playoffs, mm -hmm. they somehow didn't find a way. Yes. So they decided to test themselves this season. They made a few trades mm -hmm. and brought in Bobby Portis Jr. Mm -hmm. and also brought in Drew Holiday from uh -huh. the New Orleans Pelicans, yes. who was absolutely money. Mm -hmm. That in itself was an upgrade to what they had before yeah. because they had Eric Bledsoe now who was transferred and traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah. Looking at the differences between now and what they were before, you could say that they somehow decided to test themselves mm -hmm. on how we are going to face the postseason. Yes. And they didn't actually focus on having the best record in the league. They finished that actually in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. And they tested themselves. They tried to make new adjustments. Coach Bud was doing absolutely incredibly. Yeah. He lined up some players who we thought that they wouldn't get into the team. Yeah. He made some good adjustments in there. And I guess they learned through the process at that time. And going back into even the journey they had this postseason, they played against the Miami Heat, quite easy for them. They swept them. And then they played against now the super team that everyone expected them to win against. And that was the Brooklyn Nets yes. against Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. You had Kerry Aving and you had James Harden. Yeah. They lost also to the first two games in there. And their resilience was able to show up again. They were able to come back. Mm -hmm. You look at their home record in yeah. the postseason. They have won 10 and only lost one game. So that would tell you something about the, the Bucks that they actually prioritize mostly on the FISM forum. Yeah. And you can see even the fans out there, they are really enjoying the mix. Yeah. And so for the Bucks to have come up against the Brooklyn Nets and win against them in a best of seven series, yeah. that might have given them the confidence going in against the Phoenix Suns, facing adversity. If there is anything that Yanis Satendokounmpo has been known for this season, has been how he has been able to fight his strength mm -hmm. and he's been able to at least conquer when he has some weaknesses in the game. Yeah. Everyone in the past few seasons has been talking about Yanis Satendokounmpo being that kind of a player that can shoot from the perimeter, he can shoot free throws. Free throws were a problem for yeah, him. Yeah, and what yeah. you saw in the finals, in the final game where he scored 50 points, yeah. he converted 17 out of 19 free throws. Yeah. Actually, the level of disrespect was seen in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. where a certain pub decided to gift free drinks to every made free throw by Yanis Satendokounmpo. Mm -hmm. He ended up sinking 17. <laughs> we probably could at least keep those people in, the, in our prayers because yeah. they had lots of booze in there. Yeah. But at the same time, you talk about the nature of Yanis Atendokounmpo. I was going through his profile on Twitter yeah. and there is a certain statement he has on his bio where he says that the sweetness in success. Mm -hmm. He, after the game, talked about probably how it would have been easier for him to move away from Milwaukee Bucks, go to a Lakers, go to a Golden State Warriors, join a super team, mm -hmm. and just play a role yeah. and win the championship. But he decided to stick with Milwaukee. Being the 13th pick in 2013, probably would have gone to the Atlanta Hawks, yeah. picked by the Bucks, and he decided to build a team with Chris Middleton, who also was part of that team and got in as a second round pick from yeah. Detroit. It was impressive. It's the good you have brought in the super teams and the likes of LeBron, who was not going to make it this, uh, this time round with an injury and yeah. all that. Yeah. So, 
Stephen Curry also never um, made yeah. it with the Golden State Warriors. A lot of changes with Durant also going yeah. to the Brooklyn Nets. But is it another time also now we are seeing another shift in basketball? The, the, the time of LeBron, Steph is now gone. The likes of Durant, Harden. It's now the terms of Yanis at Tentokumbo and Drew Holiday. Well, it's not the first time we've seen this kind of wave <laughs> in basketball. Yeah. Yeah. But it could spell that wind of change coming in yeah. for a few seasons. Mm -hmm. And I would like to think this is not a one-off. Because yeah. what we saw from this side is that they've learned how to win. Mm -hmm. Once you learn how to win, you can win again if yeah. you maintain the same level of discipline. Mm -hmm. And it's a side that's built on guys who can go the whole hog for the next few seasons. I think there'll be a factor going forward. Mm -hmm. But then again, the more established sides like the LA Lakers yeah. will want to reassert themselves mm -hmm. back into dominance. Yeah. They have the money. Mm -hmm. And in sports, money is like a mother's breast milk to a, an infant. Yeah. It, it, it keeps that child going and going and mm -hmm. going and growing and growing and growing and fighting off disease. So there's going to be a contest. Let's not throw in the towel yet. There's mm -hmm. going to be a contest between the much more established uh, basketball sides versus the new kids on the block who've now brought their team first victory yeah. in, for 50 years, man. Yeah. Look at the game five. Mm -hmm. 13 seconds to go. Mm -hmm. Drew Holder throws and all up. Yeah. <laughs> and then Yanis, is there. Yanis comes in with a dunk. Was that the turning point? And they were like, if we're going to game six now, we're going to kill these guys off. No, that was not the turning point. Yeah. The turning point was in game four, final seconds of the game. Mm -hmm. Bucks are leading by two. Yes. And Ryan Drayton has a chance to draw a dunk. Mm -hmm. And Yanis Atentokumpo, with the level of flight that he had, he was able to block that shot. Uh -huh, Probably yes. one of the best blocks, blocks you've seen <laughs> in NBA Finals. Yeah. And I, I can stand for it because mm -hmm. he was defending Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. And he decided to see that Dan Dayton is all over him yes. and he jumped over him and was able to get that block. Mm -hmm. If they lost that game, they would have gone down 3-1. Yes. Probably they, they would not come back because mm -hmm. they were going away in yes. the next game. Mm -hmm. But those kind of plays have been seen by those instrumental guys that you need. And True Holiday was instrumental, especially yes. in that game five that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because it was a steal from True Holiday that he, he, he picked it from Chris Paul yes. and was able to drive through. So Yan is screaming at him and he was yes. able to throw the alley-oop pass plus mm -hmm. a foul. Yeah. I think the level of plays that they showed in mm -hmm. big moments, yeah. for example, even that 50-point game, yeah. Yanis Atenakumpo doesn't have any nerves. Mm -hmm. And I was looking back at his history and how he's come into the NBA. Yeah. He knew nothing about the NBA. <laughs> he came in straight into the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes. And everyone is telling them, hey, do you know Brandon Jennings? And he's like, who is that? <laughs> and that is the thing that built him up, that he doesn't fear anyone and he's going to judge you by the way you play. Yeah. And we've seen that and they are deserving champions this season, definitely. <laughs> Finally, you're looking at uh, Michael Jordan some time back, and even when you watch the last dance, he's being asked about who is the GOAT in basketball, and he says that's a bit of disrespect for the other players who were before my time and me playing this time and the players who are coming after my time. And Yanis yesterday said, it's not about being the best of the best, it is just being about the history, mm -hmm. you being part of yeah. the history, winning yeah. the NBA, just playing in the NBA and winning the NBA. Being part of that, you're already great enough and everything. But before even winning the championship this year round, he had already been named MVP, I think, yeah. two consecutive seasons. Yep. He had been MVP for the NBA oh. and also coming out as one of the best players in this generation mm -hmm. that is playing in the NBA. Do you believe he has joined the status of the GOATs now and he'll be there for some good time? It is his time now to rule the NBA? Not yet. He's on his way there. <laughs> He's on his way there. <laughs> yes. It takes a bit more than that. He's on yeah. his way there. Mm -hmm. Let's not jump the gun and yeah. pile pressure on him. Mm -hmm. He's got some great days ahead. Yeah. And to and he hasn't even retired. Mm -hmm. He's so only twenty six. Yes. He's only 26. <laughs> to, to, yes. <laughs> to start really putting him there with Jordan. Yes. And the rest of them. 
uh, yes. like uh, Ab- Abdul Karim Jabbar, Jabbar yes. yes, and Magic Johnson, mm-hmm. maybe even Larry Bird. Mm-hmm. It's too early, too yes. soon to to do that. Uh, mm. Usually, the British media, the ones that do that <laughs> with with their, with their soccer players, the <laughs> yes. English media. Let me be more uh, uh, precise. The yeah. English media do that with their soccer players. Mm. They even went as far ahead as calling Wayne Rooney the white Pele. Yes. And Wayne Rooney only ended up scoring one goal at mm-hmm. a, at, after three or four World Cups. Yes. Let's not jump the gun. Let's give him time to grow. Yeah. And when he's done and dusted with it, yeah. that's when we can come up and say, he got there or he almost got there. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Sami, I would mm-hmm. like you to give me your final word on this uh, session of the NBA, considering that... Milwaukee Bucks have won it now, mm-hmm. and they, I think three key players for me, mm-hmm. I will go with Yanis and Tokumbo. Mm-hmm. We had Bobby Portis there, yeah, yeah. and then uh, Drew Holiday. Mm-hmm. When you look at them, if they stick together the mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. Uh, the Golden State Warriors stuck with their golden troops for yep. some time, yep. is it also their time now to make sure that they can stamp some authority in the NBA? Yeah, those are the key things for the Milwaukee Bucks going into next season. Yes. Number one, Coach Belden Hose is mm-hmm. ending his contract next season. Yes. Probably you might want to extend it because you've seen what he can do. Yeah. We, we were doubting him at first, but this time around we've seen what he can do with the adjustments that he's made all over. Mm-hmm. Bobby Portis is good that you mentioned him. He mm-hmm. came in as a free agent. He's yeah. going to be a free agent this season. Yeah. Probably you want to see whether he's, he'll get a new contract at the club mm-hmm. or he's going to go out on free agency and maybe get a better deal elsewhere. And the other guy that you've just mentioned again is Drew Holiday. Mm-hmm. They've got to keep him. PJ Tucker. He's yes. another impressive player for the team. He, he made a record of not scoring points yes. in three games of the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. But his defensive attributes were what just stood out. Yeah. He's been there for a long time with the Houston Rockets. And this time Ron won the championship. He came in as a free agent. Yes. Another man that they should keep going into next season. Keeping the band is really essential for these franchises, especially if you want to defend a title. Yeah. Yep. Talk of people who actually do not sleep at night. One of them is Sami Gitai. Staying all night watching the NBA all the way from the draw, the group stages and the preliminaries all the way to the championship. Those are the guys. What is the name? What are Lalangu Siko? There's a name they usually call them. Forgotten <laughs> that name. We'll be looking for it a little later on. And also Taylor's Wayaki here. Let's take a break with some of the matches that have been played in the Olympics with Brazil winning 4 2 against Germany. Richardson coming on with a hat trick. And when we come back, we'll be talking about what do you expect from the Tokyo Olympics 2020 and also some of the highlights of the transfers that have been happening here in the world. Robert Osore in the touchline. We'll be back in a moment. In so many years.